Well, hi there. I'm here today with a jeweled Lacerta. This is an animal that is quickly growing on me as maybe being the most perfect pet lizard there is. And I want to tell you all about that today because not that many people even know this lizard exists. And it is one of the best ones you could possibly get. This particular jeweled Lacerta is a male. His name is Mr. Lacerta and he belongs to my buddy Nick, who's been so kind as to loan him to us today. And I could not be more thrilled with this lizard. I feel excited just to get to hang out with it. You may recognize the jeweled Lacerta from actually a couple of videos we've already done. One of them being the head-to-head -head between the jeweled Lacerta and the blue tongue skink, when we were seeking, essentially, the best tiny alternative to an Argentine tegu. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out right here. Also, because this lizard is stinking rad, you may have seen it on our video five more of the best pet lizards you could possibly get because this lizard is without question one of the greatest pet lizards on planet Earth and so stinking underrated and so I'm so grateful that I get to talk to you about the jeweled Lacerta today. Now that said, and this is going to come as a surprise, we only give the jeweled Lacerta a score of three out of five and that might seem like a really low score. So I gotta justify myself, I gotta explain where I'm coming from with this, and that's gonna come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability. For this particular jeweled Lacerda, I would give it a score of five out of five. He's just unbelievably great. This is Mr. Lacerda, and what a phenomenal dude. I just love this guy. He's just so patient hanging out with me. Honestly, I don't know how we're going to have any bloopers at the end because all he wants to do is hang out and be amazing. But in general, I would give the jeweled Lacerta a score of 3 out of 5, and that is what they're going to receive today. The reason that they get a 3 out of 5, a lot of it is just that they tend to be shy. Jeweled Lacertas in general will hide a lot of the time, and they don't particularly like to be picked up or, or harassed while in their enclosure. That's not to say that they're gonna hurt you. They're not particularly inclined to bite, scratch, or tail whip, but they are gonna try to get away from you and they are very fast. And so they're gonna try to avoid being handled if at all possible. And they could bite you if you really, really force it on them. On the upside though, they're very food motivated. And, and that is something that works to your advantage with a lot of monitor species and other animals that are shy but love to eat because you can start to build a relationship of trust with them and you can get them to this point. What I'm telling you is that they don't, they don't come out of the box like this, but with work, they can become very, very mellow, very good with handling. It's not something that they're going to crave or are going to seek out, but it's definitely something that you can establish with your jeweled Lacerta, and that's awesome. They're also a very sturdy and good size. This is one of my favorite sizes for a lizard, roughly the size of a bearded dragon. They get to be about two feet long for a male, a little bit shorter for a female, and that's big enough that you're very unlikely to injure it with just regular handling. At the same time, it's not so big that they're likely to injure you with regular handling. It's that happy medium, and I love medium-sized lizards. Lizards right around this size, perfect size for a lizard. They can drop this tail. You know for me that's always a con. I hate it when lizards can drop their tail. I've never actually seen a jeweled Lacerta that has dropped it, but they have that capability, and I'm always extra careful with any lizard that can do that anytime it wants to. Another wonderful thing about them is they don't tend to stress very easily, so you can handle them without worrying about it crashing afterward as a result. That's not to say that you want to force yourself on them, because that's not going to allow you to build that relationship of trust that you're going to need in order to get to this point, where I'm not having to restrain him or do anything. He is just hanging out with me and being the most perfect lizard in the world. But you're not going to do them harm with moderate gentle handling. When it comes to care, we give the jeweled Lacerta a score of 3 out of 5. There are a lot of wonderful things about keeping a jeweled Lacerta. One thing is that they need a very, very reasonable basking temperature, and I like that. Not super hot like you see with a Euromastix or even a bearded dragon, but more around the temperatures that you would see with, say, a blue tongue skink. They do need UVB and you know those lamps can be expensive so that is definitely one of the things to keep in mind if you're considering a jeweled Lacerta. They're omnivorous. They eat in the wild a lot of snails, also insects, fruits and vegetables, and you're going to need to provide them these things in captivity and that can be tough. 
Uh, not super tough. The nice thing is there are a lot of things to eat. The downside is that you need to find a lot of different things for them to eat in order to take care of one properly. These guys do eat snails, which can be a pain to get, but if you have a varied enough diet, you probably don't need like a staple of snails. And snails can be ordered, links in the description. They have, with that food, a fantastic feeding response. I talked about this when it came to handling, and it's also wonderful when it comes to care. Generally speaking, they're gonna eat stuff, and that's really good, because you don't want an, a lizard that's never gonna eat for you. They do need to eat on a fairly regular basis, just about daily would be the right feeding schedule, so it is a lizard you're going to need to put some work into daily. It's not just feeding, you're also gonna need to regulate their humidity on a daily basis. I'll talk about this a little bit more here in a moment, but keeping their humidity just right is important, so you're gonna have to check that and probably miss them daily. They need a large enclosure because they're a fairly large, very active lizard, but not one of the more colossal enclosures of any lizard we've talked about. Not like you're gonna see on a tegu or a savannah monad or something like that. So a reasonable, commercially available enclosure. You're not gonna have to build it yourself, but it will be large. It'll take up a lot of space and it'll cost a lot of money. Inside of that enclosure, they're gonna need areas to bask and areas to hide. They're gonna need deep substrate because these animals like to dig a lot. And so it needs to be several inches of substrate that'll hold moisture and also hold its shape when they dig a burrow, not collapse on them, because that could be a, a really tragic event. Like I said before, humidity is a big issue, and so you need to keep it in a fairly narrow range. Uh, too high and they can start to get skin infections, too low they can get respiratory infections, you need to keep it just right in that happy medium, and so that is something you're going to need to check on a regular basis. You're going to want to have a humidity gauge inside of your enclosure so you can keep track of that, probably at multiple locations inside the enclosure, and you're just gonna need to be vigilant when it comes to their humidity, and that's a pain. On top of that, they'll need access to water. They will drink out of a water bowl, but you need to mist mostly to keep humidity just right. When it comes to hardiness, we give the jeweled Lacerda a score of four out of five. Like I mentioned before, humidity is gonna be an issue with them. It's usually not something that's going to lead to their death unless you're just really, really doing a bad job of keeping that humidity right, but you can have some health problems that may require you to go to a vet, and that's a pain. However, if you keep that humidity right and you provide the basic requirements of life, like uh, proper basking temperatures, pro proper humidity, of course, access to water, access to food, these lizards are going to do really well for you. They're going to be solid, solid captives that are unlikely to just randomly crash on you and that's wonderful. Just make sure, like I said, that you're misting regularly, that you're checking on that humidity, and that they have UV right temperatures. You're good to go. When it comes to availability, we give the jeweled Lacerda a score of two out of five. The truth is, these guys are almost never seen. You're never, or almost never, I should never say never, but you're almost never gonna find these guys in a regular pet shop. I've rarely ever seen them at expos, the main place that you're going to be able to find them is you're going to be able to find them online and, and hopefully then you have a breeder that you trust so that you can get a captive bred baby and not one they're just telling you is a captive bred baby. The reason that they're so difficult to find is because they're so underrated and so unknown. They're really not that difficult to breed as long as you permit them appropriately during the winter which just means cooling them down a little bit so that they go through a, a cycle. This is a temperate lizard and so it's going to go through a, a cycle during the winter where it's going to slow down and then come spring when you turn things back up and extend the length of the day they're going to be ready for normal spring activities. And, and they're very good at reproducing. They're very fecund which means they have a lot of offspring all at one time and so they really aren't difficult to to produce in captivity. It's just there aren't that many people doing it and there aren't that many people asking for them, which actually bodes well for you, because if you do find one, they tend to not be super duper expensive. It's just hard to find a breeder who is producing them, and that's a, a bummer. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the jeweled Lacerda a score of three out of five. Like I said before, the lizard itself is actually not all that expensive. I would, I would call it moderately expensive, uh, maybe costing you after shipping it a little over $100, depending on the time and what demand is like. 
it does vary a little bit, but they're never super expensive. And like I said, this is because there's not much demand for them and they produce a lot of babies when they do. So when you can find them, people are just trying to sell them all. Where you're gonna spend a little bit of money is gonna be on that enclosure. That enclosure needs to be large. Like, is it not enormous? You're not gonna have to build it yourself necessarily, though you can, but it is gonna need to be a fairly big enclosure and those are expensive. Inside of that enclosure also they're going to need fairly expensive lighting. I said UV lighting. They also need a, a, a hot basking spot. Not super hot, but somewhat hot. And so these, these things all start to add up. You're going to need a water bowl. You're going to need hides. You're going to need several inches of substrate that they can dig in that'll hold its shape and hold moisture, not collapse on them. These are going to be things like eco-earth mixed with sand. There are also a lot of other things that you can use. And as with any loose substrate, you need to be careful when you feed them that they're not ingesting very much of that. You will definitely need a humidity gauge for these guys, maybe several of them. And as always, we've got links to those down in the description. Please check those out. In fact, go ahead and use those links when you buy it. That actually helps our channel out, so we appreciate it. Other than that enclosure and the lights, everything is fairly reasonable, just typical stuff that you're gonna need for a lizard and not that difficult to obtain. Really, the only reason they lost points is because that enclosure, it's expensive. It's not, not gonna break the bank, but it's expensive. Overall, we give the Jeweled Lacerda a score of three out of five, and, and you can see the reasons why it lost a few points here and there. And none of those reasons have anything to do with how awesome this lizard is because it's just stinking rad. And if you think that this lizard is right for you, if you've heard these things and decided, hey, you know, none of these things are a problem for me, I can do this, I can handle this, you're gonna be really, really happy with the Jeweled Lacerda. One of the most incredible pet lizards on planet Earth. One of the most beautiful animals of any kind that you will ever see in your whole life. I just adore this lizard and I am thankful for this time I got to spend with him. As always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon. When it comes to hardiness, oh now you're going to explore for us. Hey dude, oh, you are perfection. Oh, you're awesome. You are so awesome. Oh, you're so, he's so good. Right now, I think I had already pointed to it. Clint, what was my rule? <laughs> Does not listen. <laughs> well, oh, oh. <laughs> How about silent and, or off? Down in the description. Pizza's here. So good. I'm so happy with this lizard. I cannot tell you how wonderful this lizard is. Cool. He's Gus Gus level amazing, but just tiny. Cool. Look at that tongue! Look at it! <laughs>